Shalom. Um, I'd like to thank, first of all, the Most High for making this video. Um, this video is intended for the Hebrew sisters. I'm not trying to offend anyone. I'm just trying to be real and um, speaking on my own personal experiences. And the title of this video um, is Sisters Humble Thyselves. I can honestly say that I had to learn this the hard way. So I'm just speaking on my own personal experiences. I know a lot of people um, are maybe sometimes too prideful as far as you know, saying that um, they've done things wrong or, you know, haven't done things the right way. So I'm just letting you know that I'm just speaking from my own personal experience. And the reason I titled this video as Sisters Humble Yourself is because we have to realize that it's, it's not about us. We're supposed to be, well, if you're um, married, you're supposed to be here for your husband. And for the new sisters that's coming into the truth, if you aren't married yet, then um, this is a good video for you to watch so you can um, listen and take in the um, knowledge that I'm trying to provide to you so that way you'll know how to be um, for your husband. And it says here that we have to examine ourselves and stop having attitudes and being angry like the scripture says in... 1 Corinthians 11 and 28, it says, let a man examine himself, meaning you have to look at yourself, not anyone else, but you, um, so that you don't eat and drink that cup of damnation, because if you don't take a look at yourself and admit your faults and your wrongs, then it's not benefiting you as far as trying to read the scriptures and pray and meditate on the things that you're asking the most high for because if you are not um, doing these things then he's not going to listen to your prayer anyways and so let's let's look up the meaning of humble the meaning of humble is having or showing a modest or low estimate of one's own importance So that means that you have to humble yourself because your husband is the head of you. So I'm not trying to um, say, oh, well, that, you know, like, we your, your husband is not a um, dictator or anything like that. He's just trying to do the right thing for you so that you can make it into the kingdom. And at Genesis 2 and 18, it says, And the Lord Yahweh said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a help me for him. So the scripture here says, For him, not equal to him, it says, Help me, meaning help him meet and achieve the things that he needs to do. That's what a help me is, a helper. Okay. And um, so I had to take a look at myself and realize that the Most High gave us a divine order at 1 Corinthians 11 and 3, which says, But I will have you know that the head of every man is Yahushua, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Yahweh Shah is Yahweh. So that's the divine order that he gave. It didn't say that woman was head of the man. It just, that's not what it says. And if this offends you, I'm sorry, but this is just what the scripture says. So when that scripture is not being practiced, then there is chaos. And when you look up the definition for the word chaos, that word means complete disorder and confusion. So, and if you have, um, you know, your small children in the home and they see all the chaos, how do you think they're going to be? Or how do you think they're going to act? So just think about that for a moment. 
if there's always chaos, a lot of arguing, and you arguing back and forth with your husband in front of your children, um, and you trying to rule your husband, then th that's not good at all. Because if you have a daughter, and if that constantly goes on until she's at the age where um, she's going to go and look for her husband, she's going to look for... Um, Someone that she can um, dominate or be over. And then if you have a son, he's going to look for a wife that is constantly, you know, that's going to give him problems. So um, we have to be mindful of how we act in front of our children. Okay. So now let us see what 1 Corinthians 11 and 8 says. For the man is not of the woman but the woman of the man. It says not of because the Most High didn't take a rib from you. He took it from Adam. You see the word of, let's look up the definition of of. And again, in the last video I made, um, I said it's good to have a dictionary so whenever you read the scriptures, you can look the words up so you'll understand what they mean. Because sometimes we read things and we read words and we don't know what they truly mean. Okay? And it says, of expressing the relationship between a part and a whole. So here we see that it says a part and a whole, meaning... We are a part of our husband because the Most High took Adam's rib and we make a whole. So start to think of the scripture at Ephesians 5.31. It says, For this call shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. Not still in the same two, but one flesh. Now, I know sometimes um, when it says one flesh, I know um, a few times that when me and my husband communicate, sometimes we say the same thing at the same time. So that helps me know and to realize that we are thinking on the same accord. It's like our mind is together. And that Philippians 2 and 2, it says, Fulfill ye my joy, that ye may be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. So we have to have the same mindset as our husband, not thinking that we know what's best for us. So you have to swallow your pride and just be in that same like mindedness as your husband. So if he's thinking spiritually and scripturally um, for you and your benefit, then don't just don't give him a problem because he's just trying to do what's best for you to help you get into the kingdom because he's responsible for you. He's teaching you the scriptures. And you have to ask questions and understand what the scriptures mean. So he's really, you know, trying to help save you so that you can make it to the kingdom. So you have to swallow your pride. And let's look up the definition of the word pride. It says a feeling or deep pleasure or satisfaction derived from one's own achievements. The achievements of those with whom one is closely associated or from qualities or possessions that are widely admired. So basically, you get pleasure out of being prideful. Well, the scripture has a solution for that. It said, okay, there are several scriptures that talk about pride, so I just listed a few here. First, we have Proverbs 11 and 2, which reads, when pride cometh, then cometh shame. But with the lowly is wisdom. So 
So when you are prideful, that is shameful. Because you're not being in accord with the Bible. Now, it's you just have this feeling inside. Um, I don't know if you ever felt shame before, but it's not a good feeling. And when you're prideful, then that's what you're doing. You, you don't have any shame. And let's see what the word lowly means. Low in status or importance. Humble. And remember at the beginning of this video, I stated what humble meant. Again, it's not about us. It's not about you. It's about you being here and being a helper for your husband. And here we go again with the pride um, scriptures. It says at Proverbs 16 and 5. Everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Though hand join in hand, he shall not be unpunished. Wow, that scripture is powerful. It says proud in heart is an abomination. So let's see what that, that word means. Abomination. A thing that causes disgust or hatred. So, do you want to be hated by the Most High and disgusted? I know I don't. That's a horrible feeling. You might as well not even um, exist if you're going to be disgusted and hated by the Most High because He gave you life. Okay, the next scripture that I wanted to go over is Proverbs 29 and 23. It says, A man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. So this scripture states your pride can bring you to a low state. And I don't know if any of you have ever been to a low state before, but that's not a good feeling. You don't want to be low. You want to be up here. And it says, but honor which means high respect or esteem. So your husband and the Most High will have more respect for you and esteem. And the word esteem means respect and admiration, typically for a person. And guess who that person is? It's you. So if you're not prideful, and you do the things that you're supposed to do according to the Bible and the scriptures, then your husband will have a lot of respect for you and the Most High. Okay, and another scripture I would like to go over is Proverbs 16 and 18, which says, Pride goeth before destruction, and an haughty spirit before a fall. Here the scripture states being prideful is going to cause your demise. So you decide whether you want to live or you want to die over something as simple as your pride. And having a haughty spirit. Now let's see what haughty means. Arrogantly superior and disdainful and here are a few synonyms for that word so if these words pertain to you then this I'm talking about you this is pertaining to you so these are some of the things that you need to change so that synonym for that word proud arrogant vain conceited snobbish superior or having your own self-importance. Now you can look up each one of those words and see if they pertain to you. And if so, then you have some work to do. And I know you can do it, so don't give up and lose hope. But you have to have faith to know that you can change the way that you are.
you you can change. My husband tell me that every day, that you have the power to change. So you, if you want to do it, then you'll do it. And let's see what faith means, because a lot of us, you say the word, but you don't know what it means. It means complete trust or confidence in someone or something. So. If you say that you love your husband and you love the Most High, you have to have complete trust and confidence in them. So you have to put your faith in the Most High to change you. And you know you can change. You, you, you want to change. I know you do. I know it's hard. It's not going to happen overnight, but... If you pray and meditate on it every day, then you can change. So here, I'm going to list here some scriptures that's talking about faith. Romans 10 and 17 says, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of Yahweh, meaning the Bible so hearing meaning listening to the reproof and instruction that your husband gives and it's only because he loves you and he wants you to make it into the kingdom he, he doesn't want your destruction he wants you to make it into the kingdom and at James 2 and 17 it says even so faith, if it have not works, is dead, being alone. So you have to have works, meaning following the divine order, following the statute and commandments, and understanding your wife duties. So we have to understand that. And what I mean by wife duties, I mean things that your husband asks you to do, um, making sure you keep your house clean, making sure that you cook healthy food um, for you if you have children, for them also. Um, making sure that your children learn the Bible and things that's in the Bible. And if you're not able to homeschool your children, if, the, if they're in public school, make sure that when you come home, the things that they're learning in school you can also teach them at home also about things that they need to know about themselves, about their, um, you know, their culture. Um, not this so-called religion that's out today. Um, teach them who they truly are and about themselves and the true history of the country and themselves and things of that nature. So that's what I mean by wife duties. Oh, and, and keeping yourself up. Um, not being um, <laughs> um, and keeping yourself up that's what I mean by wife duties now the tongue is very powerful at Proverbs 18 and 21 it says that death and life are in the power of the tongue and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So always be mindful of the things that you say. And last but not least, I want to close this video with this last scripture at Ephesians 4 and 27. It says, Neither give place to the devil. And 29 says, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. So if ever a problem arise, sit down and talk it out with scriptures and pray to the Most High for direction. I hope you like the video, share the video, and again, take this to heart and try to change your life for the better so that you can make it into the kingdom. Shalom.